sweeps. What is it? You've probably heard of this phenomenon called sweeps. Well, here's what it is, and here's how it affects dun 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 when you can take vacation. Sweeps happens four times a year, in February, May, July, and November. These are the four most serious months in TV news because they are the months where there is typically the most viewership. So news stations try to put on special reports to persuade you to watch them versus watching the competition. To fully understand sweeps, we need to start with the month of May because there's a lot going on for various businesses. So here's what that is. The month of May is typically when most network shows and sometimes cable shows run their last episodes, including their season finales. These episodes get a lot of views because they tend to be the best produced episodes of the season. You've probably noticed this amongst your favorite series. They're the episodes that move fast, have lots of plot development, and are actually interesting. And this is all important because if you're watching one of these shows, chances are you might be watching the commercials too. And news stations know this and therefore run promos of their newscasts during these commercial breaks because they know that exponentially more people are watching in May than most other months of the year. This is why stations invest in producing special reports. It gives you an extra special reason to watch the news that night. May is also important for one other reason. If your station happens to do what's called win the ratings period, which means that a particular newscast that your station produces is number one because it got the most viewers. When that happens, the station can then raise the cost of commercial time in that newscast. In other words, they get to charge more per commercial. Dovetailing off of that, this next point is interesting too. 25% of most commercial sales at local stations are car commercials, meaning the local dealerships. So what fills the other 75%? Well, that depends on what time of day the commercial is airing. The point here is that if your station's 10 p.m. newscast got the most viewers, therefore it's now number one then the station's salespeople get to charge that car dealership or whoever is buying that commercial time slot, that 15, 30 second spot, a much higher rate than the other stations in town because those other stations got fewer viewers and therefore must just overall be less interesting to watch. May is also important for one additional reason and that's because of what's called the upfronts. This is when advertisers all meet in New York and are told what TV shows the broadcast networks are debuting in the fall. The presentation is called The Upfronts because the networks are announcing upfront what they're going to have on in the fall. Upfronts typically take place in June and that's why May sweeps the month before it is so important. Advertisers know what kind of audience they want. If they want women, they want to advertise during Grey's Anatomy. If they want men, they may advertise amongst Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Now, most advertisers are usually always most interested in looking for women because research shows that they make the buying decisions for their families and that's regardless of if she's a working mom or a stay-at-home mom. She still decides where to shop and even what kind of car to buy. And now that you know this, you can begin to understand just how profitable of a show Grey's Anatomy is. Also too, an advertiser naturally wants to reach the most amount of people possible at one time. So of course, they want to buy TV commercial time from the top station in a media market. So let's use Dove as an example. They advertise mostly to women who also happen to watch the news. Therefore, Dove is going to look to buy commercial time from the number one stations in all 210 media markets starting from New York on down. How does a station prove it's number one? Well, by the Nielsen sweeps numbers that track the viewership the month before in May. And now hopefully you can now see how this is a cycle. The station you work for 
always wants to make more money. It can do that by raising the price per commercial. It can only do that if more people watch, and well, more people need a reason to watch. So they decide to run promos during the most watched episodes of TV in May. Great, but what are we going to promote in those time slots? How about a special report or investigation that you'll only see on our station? This is all a long way of showing you that sweeps exist, and also too, frankly, how you get paid as a journalist. There are other months as well. So now that you understand the game, let's quickly, and I mean quickly, move through the other months. July. This is the only sweeps month that isn't necessarily taken seriously in all markets. And that's because most kids are on summer vacation and therefore are probably on a vacation with their parents, or at least doing something outside, something other than watching TV. So there really isn't an expectation that adults are watching either. So you'll work at stations that still take July seriously, but you'll also work with ones that are more relaxed. Next up is November. And this is important because it's like checking in on a friend who came to you for help for something. Here's what I mean. Most TV shows debuted a few months before, back in September. November is the ratings period where the network can check in to see if people are still watching. Ever been a fan of a show and all of a sudden, without any warning, it got canceled in December? That happened because few people watched. In fact, this is known as being canceled mid-season. So November sweeps is that time that networks check up on the new series that they bought back at the upfronts in May that started probably in September. And again, they're checking that performance. This now leaves us with February, which is the exact same kind of check-in, except this time it's a check-in on the official mid-season timeline to see, of course, if a program is still performing well. If it doesn't do well in February, and then again does not do well in May, it's probably canceled, and canceled for good. Now, this affects you in a couple of ways. First, it's how your station makes money. If you're working at a number one station, the staff may be paid a little bit more than the number two station, and I guarantee you a lot more than what the number three station is paying. If you're number three, you're probably the lowest ranked, unless you're in a market with four actual stations. And with this, the number one station may also have better equipment, better resources like live trucks and other tools that help you craft better journalism. Now, let's move on to vacation and personal time. You won't be able to take any of it during a sweeps month because they need everybody doing their jobs. And specifically when it comes to you, they need you on the air when the audience is used to seeing you because the more they see you, the more they trust you, and the more they trust the station, the more they're watching. This is all how you create a consistent habit in a viewer. And think about it. Growing up, did your parents have a particular station on consistently? Probably. And that's why trying to get somebody to switch stations is very hard. The habit is ingrained, and sometimes, decades so. In some of these markets, your number one leader will have been a number one leader for 15, 20 years. But the one time they do move is if the talent all of a sudden drastically changes and is also a reason why that non-compete clause in your contract that we talked about in a separate video preventing you from working at an other station and therefore possibly taking viewers with you that can actually happen because viewers follow top talent, especially if that talent has been on the anchor desk or the weather person for a decade, 15, 20 years. They're used to that person. They like their personality. There's a reason they turn on that station and that's why. So that's why that clause is in your contract. It's for the five or six, what we would call like lifers or veterans at that station. It's there to stop them. It's not really there to stop you. 
There was nobody in Springfield or Dallas that was going to change stations if all of a sudden I stopped working at one and went to go work at the other. This is mainly for the anchors, the weather people, and also traffic if your station does that as well. Going back to sweeps, because of this visibility, is also why the boss wants you on the air all of that month. And once again, is why you can't take vacation anytime this month, or even personal days. Some stations go so far as to not letting you have the month before, because during that month, they're going to give you a little bit more time to work on that special report that will air the next month. So again, not all stations in particular do exactly that, but some do, and you're going to run into that. So that is the phenomenon of sweeps, and also to how it affects you. As always, if you have any questions about what is probably the weirdest phenomena in TV news, please feel free to reach out. And I'll see you in the next video.